So, Jamie, the Seat Four Mentor. Is oh. that is Co firstly Cooper Four Mentor? Cooper Four Mentor. Is that how you say it? So you can't. You just have to say Co Cooper yeah. Four Mentor. Right, yeah, yeah. Right, Jamie. Hello. The Seat Cooper oh, no. Four Mentor. Let's do Cooper Four Mentor. Seat. Yeah, leave Seat out. Oh, you do, do we not say it at all? Nope. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So it came out around November time. So uh, oh, we got someone who's just literally parked right in front of us. So Jamie, the Cupra Four Mentor. Firstly, am I saying it correctly? Is yeah, that, what, is, think, that, is that what it's called? Yeah, I think you're pretty much spot on there. And this is a brand new model from when? When, when was this released? So we had our first demonstrator arrive uh, in around November. Yeah. Um, and it's Cupra's first standalone model. Okay. Uh, as it, as it's styling, yeah. So back in the day, let's just touch on when it was Seat Cupra. So I had back in the day a Seat Leon Cupra. R. Yeah. So now they've separated as brands all together then? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So Seat um, used to do like the Seat Leon Cupra, for example, yeah. um, had fantastic success. It's basically a 300 horsepower engine in a, in a Seat Leon. Yeah, yeah. Now the brand is uh, completely separated. So it's on uh, its own? Yeah, exactly. So now we've got the Cupra Leon um, as well. But the great thing about the Full Mentor is it's the first uh, standalone Cupra model. So there's, there's no Seat equivalent and it's the first step into Cupra becoming its own uh, completely separate brand. There you go. Well, I've learned something new today. I didn't know, I didn't know, didn't know they did that, so that's fantastic. What's different about this then? Why? What, where, where's it going to sit in the market? What's it going against in terms of other brands? Yeah, sure. So it's, it's a kind of crossover SUV. So especially when you're looking down towards the back, um, it's got a really kind of coupe swooping uh, roof line. So you're competing against stuff like the um, RS3 uh, Sportback, yeah, yeah. Um, that kind of thing. So that's why it's got such a, and even though it's an SUV, it's got all the practicality of an SUV, but then all the sporty looks of, of like a coupe. Uh, but of course it's a, it's a five door as well. So you've got all the practicality there. It does look really striking. It is. But let's let's take Audi and Volkswagen for example. What yeah. would what would be pitching against this in terms of models with the, with them with them brands? Would you say? But short to say, it'd be more like uh, VWR products and Audi S products. So it's the performance stuff. I mean, straight out with this model. What's the retail on these? What they, what's on the road price? So this is the VZ2, as I say, so this is the top spec model. So under the bonnet of the car, you've got a two litre turbocharged petrol engine generating 310 PS. So 310? 310, yeah. Wow. Uh, with a, uh, it's a four wheel drive as well. Um, a DSG automatic gearbox as well. So uh, something like this, uh, around the 40 gram mark. Um, but you can get it with metallic paint and it's just under the 40 gram mark. So, it's a lot um, of car for the money. Mm, yeah, a lot exactly. Of car for yeah. The money. So, this one's the VZ2, so this is one of the highest specs you can get in the Four Mentor. Um, so, for example, yeah, you're right on the wheels. So, you've got the 19 inch um, bi color performance alloy wheels yeah. in the matte black and the silver. So, they look fantastic. Um, and as I say, they just add to the overall kind of sporty aesthetic of the car. Yeah. Um, you get loads of standard features though, even on the base model, which is the V1, which will get the 1.5 engine in. So you get features like the full LED lights on the front. Yeah. Um, you also get like the LED light strip on the back, where you get the full 12 inch color touchscreen display as well, uh, which includes like satellite navigation, Apple CarPlay, all that kind of stuff. So fantastic. that's one of the things they do really well is adding all the standard kit early on and then they just add stuff on from there really. I think they look fantastic from the back. Mm. They yeah. look absolutely awesome. And you can tell they are menacing with the Cupra badge. Quad exhaust, rear diffuser. They look great, don't they? Yeah, I mean, this is probably my favorite angle of the whole car. It's from the back because, as you say, you've got the, I mean, the LED light strip looks fantastic, obviously, when it's all illuminated. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, the quad exhaust that you get on the 310. They do it in a hybrid as well, plug-in hybrid. So, of course, you don't get the quad exhaust on that, but they've got like a, a fantastic feature for the, for the quad exhaust on the back. Do you know what? I'm, I'm going to say it. I'm probably going to get slated. Let me know in the comments. Lamborghini. Yours kind of look. Yeah, I, I mean, it's almost I've had, like a mini version of that. I've had a lot of customers say the same thing. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, they it's say got, it's basically a mini got, Urus. Yeah. It's got that kind of look, but obviously you're paying a lot less. Mm -hmm. Probably getting a more or a hell of a lot more reliable car. Mm. Obviously not as fast. Hmm. but it's going to be lighter on the wallet to run. They've done a fantastic job. So one of the things you'll notice, uh, what they've done from the off is taken away a lot of the physical buttons. Yeah. Um, so like the climate control, which has kind of decluttered the yeah. dashboard and give it a much more kind of modern and minimalist look. I mean, that screen, how big is that screen? So that's a 12 inch color touchscreen display tailored around the driver. So all your uh, cruise control settings, that includes um, adaptive cruise control. It's all on the left-hand side of your steering wheel. Yeah. Um, you can control the digital cockpit. So you get a full digital cockpit standard on the car yeah. and that's all customizable from the steering wheel. And then also the VZ2 and upwards, they get the satellite buttons on the steering wheel. So you see you've got the different drive profiles on the left-hand side. Okay, so that's where yeah, you yeah. can easily flick it between different drive profiles and then the engine starts stop as well. Are they calling this gold or are they calling it bronze? Uh, bronze, I think, bronze? but yeah. 
I love the detail that they've got in here. It's it's really nice. And the seats, what what colour are these seats? So these are petrol blue and they're Napa leather seats. So they're genuine Napa leather seats. But yeah, it's not just on the seats. We've got it all uh, detailed throughout the interior. So it's all on the door cards, um, stitched and also in the rear of the car as well. Really impressed with the inside here. Like first impressions, like this is the first time I've sat in it and it just looks fantastic. It feels nice, even the mats. Mm -hmm. I mean, usually you get some, just some crap carpet mats, but they're, look at them, they're, they're really nice. When you're sitting in here, it feels like a 60 grand car. Mm. Especially when you look at the equipment, so a standard on the VZ2, um, you get, for example, like a heated steering wheel, um, you get heated seats uh, for the front. Yeah. Um, you also get features like automatic high beam assist as well. Let's say cruise control, lane assist, so it's got most of the kit as standard. Richard has left uh, one of his child seats in here, we'll have a look. <laughs> Oh, look, he hasn't got no so Richard <laughs> Richard doesn't have normal no kiddie seats obviously he's got to have the Recaro seats <laughs> yeah. space wise we're all right in here aren't we we've got plenty of room yeah so what they've tried to do on the four wheel tour is give it a nice long wheelbase between the front and the rear wheels so you should have loads of room in the back uh, for rear passengers and you've also got um, like three zone climate control so you can control your climate independently in the back Oh, wow. uh, and you've also got uh, USB sockets they're USB-C as well so they're kind of future proof just noticed that <laughs> that's the first car I've seen, well, that I've sat in for a while with USB-C. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they're really trying to jump ahead of the game with this. I'll find out more about Cooper, by the way. I think you need to come to say at Lister's Coventry, <laughs> speak to Jamie, he's the man. So you get the electric power tailgate as standard on the VZ2. That's a decent boot as well, isn't it? So it what's just, it called then, this? Uh, electric power tailgate, and that's a virtual pedal. So you can just, obviously, if your hands are full. So you put you your just, foot? Yeah, just underneath. There you go. What? That's cool. <laughs> See, yeah. that, that's nifty, that. Yeah, yeah. That is really cool. So if you are a busy photographer, videographer, and you've always got your hands full of kit. <laughs> I knew it was going to do that. Yeah, hey, look. <laughs> so we're, we're currently, we're starting out in comfort mode. I think we, we let's, let's build ourselves up to the uh, Cooper button yeah. and see what uh, see what that does. Yes. But first impressions, it, it's very comfy. There's literally no buttons. That is absolutely confusing me because like, I want to turn this down. But where do I turn it down? <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh it's look at that. that! It's really comfy. You actually feel like these seats. Oh, it's even got the bolster adjusters as well. The seats feel like you're in a sports car, and the steering wheel as well small steering wheel love the car i love the cooper branding i love the bronze carbon buttons everywhere i mean stop the start engine buttons usually you get on a ferrari not in a cooper i love that i think it's fantastic so full 360 camera on there which is amazing that screen is incredible i don't think i've seen a screen as big in a car before but they're they are they are all the manufacturers are all going this way Land Rover the same, everything's just screen, you know, in the centrepiece there, it's just digital. So I think this is the this is the way forward, this is what you're gonna see in cars these days. You've got a little bit there for your key. Your phone just sits in there and wirelessly charges. You at two USB C's. Um, there's nothing else really to explain, is there? Every, it's, there's, there's not much going on. So that drives itself apparently. I'm not gonna press that. <laughs> that goes through the views on your dash. So we've got speed. Oh, that's cool. I like the dial. Oh, yeah. And again, they're matching in with the bronze. You've got your engine start stop. We've got the all important Cooper button, which we've not pressed yet. But currently, we're driving in comfort. That's sport. You can hear the difference. That's Cooper mode. So is that on the. Oh, it sounds nice. It goes. the induction noise on it it's got like yeah a, tell you what it reminds me of right back in the day when you do your car up and you get you put an induction kit on your turboed car and it's got that little induction roll back in the day when you buy a turboed car obviously technology has changed now with, with engines when that turbo kicked in, that turbo was throwing you back in your seat. Where now they've got that power delivery down now. It's, it's, it's all the way, that delivery is all the way through. It's just 
delivering the power all the way through, so that it's constantly there. But it's, it feels it feels really, really quick. It's not chucking me, the only, the only negative, it's not chucking me back in my seat enough. Now, knowing Cupra, uh, Volkswagen, Audi, or any type of petrol engine like this, they are easily tunable. I'd love to know what what a remap could do. I'm sure they've I'm sure they've got maps out for these already. But um, I reckon they could probably get a bit more power out of this. I think I think it's quite conservative. I I, I, I want to see a bit more back in the seat, but I think that's probably what you get with a remap. But it, it, it's it's really nice. When you downshift, it's got a it's got a little barb on the exhaust. downshift blips the throttle for you and you can hear at the back which is nice Turn left uh, Turn. At, outside the junction, please. Okay, sat nav. Just, Just wait. Don't want to crash already. No. I will agree with Mark. The comfort on this car is unbelievable. So, here we go. Bloody hell, Kristen. It does go. Jesus. So you're soon up to 60, aren't you there? Oh my god, I am <laughs> myself slightly <laughs> now. <laughs> I'm a great driver. <laughs> you're actually alright to be fair. I do think I'd miss a manual just because of the fun of it. Yeah. I enjoy the fun driving the manual car. But That's always the age old question, it's like manual or auto, but I think it depends what car you're in. This this works in an auto. So And then when the kids and the missus are not in the car, chuck Cooper mode on, downshift it, and you can be a kid for a bit. So the Cooper 4 Mentor, fantastic car, really impressed, loads of features, goes like stink. Richard said something before he got in the car, he says like a golf bar on stilts, and he's not wrong, you put your foot down, it goes. Really, really impressed. Massive thanks to Lister Say out here in Coventry. We'll see you on the next video. Oh, shut up, please, we know.